Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include European Union removed from the education curriculum. Want to get ahead in the EU? Better start saying moo! EU budget spends more on cows than it does on youths. European Union press freedom is given the red card for being offside. European car manufacturers fudge performance data using loopholes. Also, a new EU report on SMEs gets the Ranto Rick treatment. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up from our homepage, Whitehall has announced that the European Union is to be scrubbed from the education curriculum. This story looks at the details, but this is essentially an about turn from the previous policy mandated by the Labour Party. One is left scratching his head, it seems more than a little remiss to fail to cover the EU when it carries such influence over our nation. Whether that is simply an oversight or a deliberate exclusion, I leave you to decide. Well, this article is set to make the milk curdle. Apparently, an EU report has been revealed that EU budgets more financial support for the bovine herd than it does for the young people of Europe. That really won't please the Spanish to think the bulls that they fight now get more EU funding than they do. This article covers the details. With Leveson Inquiry still rattling in the minds of the Prestaganda crew, we here at the unit are always on the lookout for the connections between member state legislation and the EU directives at their source. Well, this article has turned up another one. The article considers the approach the EU Commission is taking towards regulatory recommendation for member states in regard to press intervention. Now, the freedom of the press has been sacrosanct, but I think it's a fair statement to say that it has been clearly proven that the mainstream media operates to its own agenda and that its reporting is all too often biased. The short run, however, is the rise of the alternative media and internet bloggers, activists who are proving to be reliable sources of information when corroborated via crowdsourcing from multiple streams. Interesting, then, that the EU has such an interest in internet freedom and press regulation. Once again, the bureaucracy has been fluked by its own diatribe. This article takes a look at how European car manufacturers have exploited loopholes to make exaggerated claims about the performance of their vehicles. Hardly surprising when you consider how impossibly difficult it is to read, let alone interpret the tsunami of legislative legalese mumbo-jumbo. Go take a look at any of the reports in our legislation section and you'll see what I mean. And further to that point, that's after we've cut out some of the cruft. The bottom line is most of the MEPs don't get the time to read these biblical legislative documents, never mind understand their ramifications. But that's the point. The whole system appears to be a mass production factory for legislative diarrhoea. Check out the article for full details. The links are below. Speaking of legalese diatribe, this report from our legislation section is a prime example of the blind leading the blind. Let me quote verbatim before I comment. SMEs have proven to be of great importance to the EU. They create a very significant amount of employment and they make a strong contribution to economic growth. They may be considered the backbone of the European Union's economy and important drivers of European long-term economic growth and sustainable job creation opportunities within the 27 member states. However, SMEs have suffered terribly during the economic crisis. Suffered terribly during the economic crisis. Let's get real. SMEs have been legislated out of existence over the last 10 years across a whole field of areas. And I know this because I've been running SMEs for at least that long. Let's just take a look at employment laws. Under the EU's library of directives, the employee has so much power that most SMEs simply don't do employment if they can possibly afford it. The independent freelancer is now king, and as much as possible, businesses seek to operate using a pool of contractors. This has been bad for the companies and bad for the employees. It's much more difficult to become an employee, and businesses are much more cautious about employing. 
Just one example is the BBC in the UK. They dropped almost all of their cameramen and many of their presenters off the payroll and then brought them back in on freelance contracts. Today in our video library we have a dull bill of information as we've got the film and the book for you. In today's video, Christopher Storey is interviewed on the topic of the EU Collective and explains how the European Union is structured in a way that is similar to the old Soviet Union. We also have copies of Christopher's book, The EU Collective, for you to download from our e-book library and the links to both are below. Today is Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent, and I have a thought for you. Are you willing to step from your comfort zone to speak out for justice and freedom? Look at this image from a recent demonstration in Greece. If we allow oppression and brutality to exist unchallenged in one city, if we allow oppression and brutality to exist unchallenged in one nation, then we allow brutality and oppression to exist unchallenged in all nations. Use your voice, sign up for our newsletter, join our YouTube channel, Send us your letters so that we can speak out, speak loud and speak true on your behalf because together we are the solution. That's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. And finally, our The Word programme is active again. If you'd like one of our public speakers to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>